What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another Bust to Bust or Nah. Today's episode is about follow focus. But before this video starts, remember to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. Especially Snapchat and Instagram stories because that's where we post all the time, every day. You already know. Posting daily out here. Daily, bro. Daily. If you haven't checked out Icon, our production company, you should. That's where we post all the cool, big production videos and photos and all this stuff. All this gear that we're doing reviews on and open and unboxing that's where we do real life usage it actually has a purpose all the stuff we're getting yes so uh, let's just jump right into it so what is a follow focus what is it used for so essentially a follow focus is kind of used for um well to follow your focus no um let's say my camera has a horrible autofocus right and i it just can't keep up and well, i'm all the way back here right i'm out of focus right now but if I had a follow focus, I'd be able to keep up with me if I had a cameraman operating it. But now, like, let's say I'm moving forward, you're going to have to change your focus more. And if I'm moving forward more, 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 you're going to have to change your focus even more. See, I'm out of focus right now. But, oh, wait. See, I'm out of focus right now. I'm out of focus right now. So if you had a follow focus, you could change the focus and have me in focus. Some of you people are wondering, why don't I just change the focus on the lens of the camera? Well, let's say you're on the go and let's say you have this thing mounted on a gimbal like a Ronin or let's say you have this mounted where you can't access it. Easily. Easily, right. And your subject is moving constantly. Um, let's say for example, like a soccer game and you're trying to- Shout out World Cup. Shout out World Cup. So you're trying to keep your subject in focus. You just turn the dial on the follow focus and it'll move the, uh, the, no. the Hell, uh. it'll move the focus ring for you without any vibration of your hand touching the lens and moving it a lot of people use this in commercials or like wedding uses when they have where they have this on mounted on a gimbal and they're trying to do a tracking shot of the bride down the aisles uh, aisles the aisle or any high production uh shots or projects rarely will you see any professional use autofocus because autofocus is really unreliable um sometimes you want it to focus on let's say my phone over here and it'll just focus on me well i mean we're on the same plane but like say i want to focus on my phone right here but it'll just focus on me and then i'll jump right back to this like unreliable and in a professional environment you want to make sure that everything is controlled and everything is done by what you want it to be done by another use of follow focus is if you want to use it to uh, rack focus and rack focusing is like where you want to transition from something like over here to all the way over there and make it look like a revealing shot um a lot of people use this in commercials or scary movies i don't know man people use it all the time but it's a lot easier to do rack focusing when you have a follow focus so fo the follow focus that we chose is the pd movie remote air follow focus it's um we've read a lot of good reviews on it and it's on the cheaper side of uh, follow focuses um, follow focus is gonna get really expensive fast. You only got one motor, but it, the nice thing is it is wired. Um, sometimes with Wi-Fi, there's gonna be obstruction or whatever, like something like that. Something could be obstructing the signal with wireless. That's why I kind of like wired, but I sometimes also like wireless too because of the range that you'd get. You're limited by the wire on the wired one. So for you guys wondering, how do you mount this onto a camera? I had to build a really specific rig, especially for my GH5, but since my GH5 is over here recording, I'll just build the rig for you guys. I had to get a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I had to get a bunch of stuff just to make this rig, but I have, I have the rig here. I'll build it for you guys just so you guys can see. So obviously you have the follow focus motor right here. This is the gear right here, which will move your focus ring for you. And for that, you will need, and this is your focus gear ring, which will go around your lens so that it'll match with the 32 pitch. I chose to get this one because this one is metal and a lot more sturdy than the cheap plastic. I don't even know what they were. They broke it like on the shoot and I was kind of screwed because I needed to use the follow focus for the shot that I was trying to take. And it broke on me. So don't skimp out on this. You'll regret it if you do. So obviously the follow focus and the follow focus ring for the lens. Here are some of the wires that come with the follow focus. This one connects from the follow focus to the remote of the follow focus, which is like a wheel. Well, you can turn the dial a lot so you can dial in exactly the focal range that you want it to. And then this wire here is used to go into the motor into the P-tap supply of while well, your gimbal or whatever supplies a P-tap uh, power source, or you can uh, get this into a V-mount battery, which has a P-tap source 
right over here and you just plug that in so if you don't have a gimbal or if you're trying to use this on a tripod or something like that you can buy a v-mount battery which uh comes in handy we did an unboxing check that unboxing out over here this came with the mega unboxing that we did a few days ago so um if you guys want to know more about that check it out check out that video here's the ronin m uh quick release plate right over here um and on top of that i have a small rig um I don't know what this is exactly called, but a small rig rod holder is what I call it. And then on top of that, I have a Manfrotto quick release plate adapter. So that way I can have my Manfrotto quick release plate that's on my camera um, snap on to the top of the rig. So that way if I want to go on and off of the rig, I can just snap it on and off. And then these small rig um, rods came nice and handy. I only need one of them, but they came with two just to let you know. And you just loosen up one of these and then plug the rod in and then tighten that and then you're good. And then this motor, depending on which side you want to put it on, you could put the rod over here or whatever. But the reason I went with one rod and not two is because um, it's, this is primarily going to be on a gimbal and what's the point of having extra useless weight? Unless you wanted to put um, another motor on the other side, and maybe that might come in handy. But um, the motor has this uh, nice little adapter slide thingy that slides on like this. Oh, choke that on there. Tighten that knob. Now you're good to go. Now your camera will sit on top of here, and your ring will go around your lens, and then you'll be able to use your follow focus. So that's why I had to build this one and that's why this review took forever because I had to figure out a nice rig for this. For you guys wondering, all these parts that I use to make my rig will be linked down below. Also you guys can check out all the equipment that we use in our my kit page down below. A lot of you might be wondering, well how do you know if what you're shooting is going to be in focus? Well for us we had to buy this uh, Ninja Atmos Inferno monitor which uh, has a bunch of unique features such as false color and um... What else does it have, man? Okay, it has everything. It does everything. You can zoom in with this monitor. My favorite part about this monitor is the fact that you have focus peaking, which uh, highlights everything that's in the focal plane. Let's say I'm focusing on me right now. Um, focus peaking would be a bunch of lines that are around me because, well, I'm in focus. So you use that focus peaking assist to change your follow focus to know what's in focus. That's how we keep track of our focus and the fact that we have a nice long cable connecting from our monitor to our camera. We're able to use that monitor on our gimbal. Another thing about the monitor is the fact that our monitor also records. So we use SSDs to record. Um, so we don't even use the camera to record. We just use the camera to shoot, I guess. Review for the Atomos Ninja, Ninja Inferno will be coming soon, if not the next video. If it's already out, check it out over here. So here's our Ronin M review coming soon. Um, we mount this wrong side. So we mount the wheel over here and we just tighten it. If it ever wants to get tightened. There we go. So now it's nice and sturdy. Let me show you guys. So then you take the cord that looks like this, plug one end into the motor, and then the other end goes to the remote. And then this P-tap supply, there's a P-tap supply on the bottom of this gimbal right over here, and we'll just plug that P-tap. Here we go. Obviously you can like do cable management for the cables, but you got to remember you got to have some free room and boom. So that's how you hook it up. Let me disassemble this because uh, it's taking up too much of my shot. All right, so the way you turn on the motor is there's a fat button on the bottom. You just press and hold it and it turns on. And then you go to the remote and then you press and hold this button right here where my finger is. You press and hold that and then it'll automatically start telling the motor to calibrate the lens. It'll look for hard stops in the focus ring to know where the endpoints are so that it knows the furthest it can go. And then um, to set A and B points, which are so you have your whole focus line. Let's say you want to use only this portion of your focus and you want to make sure that the whole ring is being used for this portion. You can set 
an A and a B point out of your whole focus ring so that you can fine tune your focus even more. There are different channels that you can connect onto, but you want to make sure that all your um, motors are on the same channel. Unless you have multiple motors, then you can mess with that if you want. The last setting that you have on this follow focus is focus uh, motor speed. If you tap this button seven times, it'll change your focus speed for your motor, how fast it changes its focus. If you always forget, you always have the instructions on the bottom of this uh, focus controller. If you want to see us use our follow focus um, in actual production, and actual project, check out Icon. That's where we post all our videos and all that stuff. Uh, you'll see more of the rack focusing shots and all this stuff. I just shot this awesome wedding where the uh, follow focus came in like handy. So check that out. So let's get into the pros and cons of this follow focus. This follow focus is kind of hard to use with the Sigma 18 to 35, which is my primary lens, uh, because the Sigma 18 to 35 focus ring does not have hard stops. Um, it has like soft stops, like it'll, the ring will keep moving, but the actual focus won't move. When I have to calibrate the lens, the motor just keeps on spinning and keeps on spinning. I have to like stop the motor at the point and it's kind of a pain in the butt. Another issue is that when you turn off the follow focus or turn off the power supply that it's coming from, um, it'll forget its settings and you're gonna have to recalibrate every single time you boot up. So that kind of sucks when you're on the go and like moving place to place to place to place. You're gonna have to recalibrate every single time. So that's just more time that it just takes and it's kind of a pain in the butt. I wish that they would have fixed that. Another thing to note is that this follow focus is pretty much useless when it comes to Panasonic lenses because the focus by uh, fly by wire focus, whatever system that they have, um, pretty much how fast you change the focus ring changes how far your focus moves. It, it's, it's really dumb really dumb so if you have any panasonic lenses you just, just don't even buy this here you it's garbage let me grab my fucking panasonic lens here's my 42.5 millimeter prime uh lens for my panasonic gh5 um here's the focus ring right here um if i move the focus ring just like a hair really fast my focus will change from like here to really far but um if i could also slowly move it but uh, it, it'll just mess it up because the motor is going to move it fast or whatever however fast you want to do it and it'll just throw off the calibration also there are no hard stops on here whatsoever you can move this like a billion times and it'll still like keep turning it's like a pepper grinder yeah it's like so Panasonic lenses, nope. no. Actually, let me rephrase that. Any uh, focusing that is done by fly-by-wire is a no-go for any uh, follow focus. The one thing I mentioned before, this is a wired follow focus, so it's not wireless. I guess that's a pro and a con. Wired is like you always know you have um, connection no matter what. So there are those pros and cons. Depends what you want. Like Ethernet and Wi-Fi. Right, kind of like Ethernet and Wi-Fi. Thank you, Chad, for that comparison. And the other issue is the fact that this is really expensive. There are some other um, cheaper alternatives, but they are very, very complicated to use. So let's jump onto the positive. There are some good things about the follow focus. You can change your focus on the go. That's a big thing. Um, you don't have to rely on autofocus all the time. So like, that's that's a big plus right there, especially for me, because the GH5 sucks with autofocus. Like sucks. I might as well just. Take the autofocus like function out and just throw it away. Like you might as well have just saved your money not putting it on there. The other thing is the ability to rack focus. Rack focusing is really nice. There's a setting in the GH5 where I can set A and B points for it to rack focus, but it's so much easier with the follow focus. And it's a bit more smooth and organic, you know? I can ease into it and there's more of a manual control on it. That's what I like. The one thing I like about the follow focus is the fact that you can set A and B points. Um, and that takes your focal focal focus range, I guess you could say, your focus range and selects a part of it and then you can use that as the whole ring. So that's what I love so much about that. Another good thing is that this is great for tracking shots. If you're tracking a subject that's moving constantly, erratically, especially for music videos or something like that, you don't have to constantly stay, stay like five meters away from him and just keep that distance. You can get closer and you can get further without worrying about if your focus is on point or not because you have the monitor and you have the focus to uh, follow focus to change. The last positive thing is the fact that it's wired. Like I said, having it wired and wireless could be a good and a bad thing um i like it because i know my, my connection is stable and my connection is like there and i have to worry about any obstructions like you know like wi-fi does wi-fi so in conclusion what do i give this 
I give this a 7 out of 10. So it's not bust to bust, but it could it could be a lot better. At least have it have the capability to remember my calibration settings so I don't have to recalibrate my lens. And the other thing is the fact that it doesn't really work well with my Sigma lens, um, which is kind of like the main lens a lot of people use. Maybe try to have it work with soft stops or I don't know, figure it out. I'm not getting paid to figure it out for you. Oh! Those are some of the issues and those are some of the pros. This is the review for the PD iMovie movie can follow focus name no. right here. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> this has been the review for this thing right here. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this was a good review. Leave a thumbs up for this video if you guys enjoyed it. Uh, comment down below what your favorite part was. Comment down below if you like using autofocus because I know some Sony cameras are great with autofocus. Comment down below if you're going to get one or if you have any questions about this, I'd love to answer. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Remember Snapchat stories and Instagram stories. We're always posting on that 24-7. So remember that's where all our giveaways and stuff like that will be occurring. So stay tuned. Check us out on Icon. Like I said, our production company. That's where we use all this gear. Um, and yeah.